We've spent the month exploring the topic of mistakes and ultimately the question that we all ask ourselves every day is how do I live with the mistakes that I've made? How do I keep moving forward even though yet again today I made mistakes? And so the topic today is resilience. How do we build resilience? Build the ability to bounce back from mistakes and keep on going. There are actually scientists who research the topic of resilience. And what they've come to is what they call the three C's of resilience. The three characteristics that if people display them, those people are more likely to have resilience. I think good news is that we can work to develop all of these three C's and that that's something that this congregation can do, this community can do, is to help people build resilience because we need it. There are so many wicked problems, as the jargon goes, problems that are not solvable. Last week we spoke about the prison industrial complex, we spoke about the militarism of life for people in many countries, including the United States, and those are problems that aren't going to be easily solved. So how do we build resilience to live in the face of issues, global warming, global climate change, other issues that aren't going to be easy to take care of? How do we build resilience to keep standing up, to keep having courage, to keep facing up and doing what we can? even knowing that we will do it radically imperfectly, that we will make mistakes every single day. The first C that the scientists lift up is commitment. And what they mean by commitment is that individuals have a sense of commitment to a vision, a purpose, why we're on the planet. And that that commitment to the vision is bigger than we are, and so by definition, it is much bigger than any mistake we could make. We keep that commitment. We keep focused on our commitment. For many years, I had over my desk a quote from the poet and writer Audre Lorde, which kept me focused when I made mistakes or felt afraid. And here is the quote. When I dare to be powerful, to use my strength in the service of my vision, then it becomes less and less important whether I am afraid. It becomes less and less important whether I am afraid, and it becomes less and less important whether or not I make mistakes. Because if I am committed to a vision, that takes primacy always. And so I screw it up, but I get back and try again because the vision is that important. The second C that the researchers lift up is control. And control is a two-edged thing. You know, you think of that thing of um, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. I think that what this control element is, is all three of those things the courage to change and to control what we can control, the serenity to accept the things that are way too big and we can't control, and the wisdom to know when we exert control and when we relinquish it. Some of the most anxious people that I know can't let go of control, and they're trying to control things that are too big to control, and they're anxious and they feel like failures because they're unable to control those things. On the other hand, I know people who don't try to exert any control, who don't insert themselves, who simply feel helpless. Neither one of those polarities is going to lead to resilience. Resilience is that middle ground where we control what we can and we let go of what we can't. Years ago, when I ran the UUA's Washington office, it was a particularly bad time to advance anything that Unitarian Universalists believed in. There was a particular House and Senate and President that just made it impossible for us to achieve any of our goals. And my staff used to joke that what I spent my time doing was defining new ways to say that we were succeeding because we simply couldn't succeed in making legislative changes at that point. 
And so we would say, well, how many op-ed pieces can we get objecting to this? How many ministers are going to speak up and go meet with an elected representative to voice their objection? How many congregations are going to have a service and talk about this or an education program? And so we did redefine at that point how we could succeed so that we could have a sense of resilience, so that we could feel as if even though we couldn't control the ultimate outcomes, we could still be making small changes in the world that we could control. So the second thing that builds resilience that allows us to live with our mistakes is understanding what we can and can't control and living in that polarity. And the third thing that the researchers lift up is the concept of challenge, that people with resilience see obstacles as challenges to be overcome rather than as dead stops. You know, I've gotten really interesting in the whole movement of gaming and the whole gamers for change. There are a lot of online games now that are about how to address social problems. And there's a fabulous TED talk from a woman named Jane McGonigal. And she says that in games, when people don't accomplish something, they try and try again. They don't stop. Whereas when people read the paper, often what they do is feel as if they can't do anything. There's a helplessness that comes with that. And she thinks that applying that resilience of gaming could lead us to have more resilience in addressing actual social issues. I think that's really fascinating. So those are the three C's that the researchers lift up to build resilience so that we can live with and move past all of the mistakes that we have made, that we're making right now, and that we will inevitably make tomorrow. And those are a commitment to our vision a sense of understanding what we can change, what we can't, and when to let go in the middle, and a sense that life hands us challenges, not dead ends. I would like to add a couple more C's to this that I think are really important. One is compassion. We really need compassion for ourselves and also for everyone else who are making mistakes so that when somebody else does something that annoys us, instead of judging them and jumping on them, we think about mistakes that we've made and how we would like to be treated when we make a mistake. And another one, the final one that I'll lift up, is community. I think it's very important to be part of a community that understands, that accepts, and that lets us be who we are, even as we strive to be a little bit better every day. I'm so glad that you're part of this community. Let's make our mistakes and stay committed to our vision.